Okay, so um, for today, you know, we will be having this particular webinar. This uh, webinar is entitled as RAN Intelligent Controller or the uh, Radio Access Network Intelligent Controller. So this is uh, somehow related or rather um, a continuation of my previous webinar on the ORAN architecture. So this is one particular block in that uh, in that um, whole picture. Okay, so for the uh, RAN Intelligent Controller, let's first review briefly the ORAN architecture so that we can have a, uh, just a recap of what it is and then at which part will the RAN Intelligent Controller be and we'll have what we call the functional split because the in the open RAN architecture, the network operators, the vendors can choose how they assign the different functions of the RAN functions into the different um, ORAN components. Whether, uh, for example, the phi, the, the layer, the physical la layer is assigned to the re remote radio unit or assigned to the distributed unit. So we will cover this functional split later. And then let's also look at the RAN controller loops. The RAN controller loops mention what are the uh, main controller loops of the ORAN architecture. And then later, let's also look at the R apps and X apps, which are um, basically applications running on the uh, RIC architectures, the different RIC architectures. Particularly, we have the non-real-time RIC framework and also the near-real-time uh, RIC framework. Okay, so before going into detail on, in all of this, so let's first review the ORAN architecture. So hopefully everyone was able to attend the webinar on the deep dive into ORAN architecture so that uh, we are all on the same page. But if not, no, don't worry. It, it is okay. Okay, so first of all, let's review the ORAN architecture and um, just a brief review of the radio access networks. We know that radio access networks is composed of uh, the core network, the access network, and of course, the end user or the user equipment. So between the access network and the core network would be the transport network. So typically, the uh, we are only going to cover the access network. So we are going to cover the radio access network or the RAN. And depending on the generation of the cellular technology, there are different names for RAN. But um, to give you just an idea, you know, the radio access network is usually hosted in cell sites like this. So the components or the antennas, the, the baseband units below or the distributed units below are what compose, uh, what, um, uh, what compose the radio access networks. They are in charge of uh, communicating to the end user to facilitating this last mile connection. Okay, so um, the radio access network is called uh, differently depending on the certain generation of the mobile technology. So from 2G, 3G, until 5G, they have different names. So in 2G, um, we have GSM or we also have EDGE. This is um, not specifically 2G but towards 3G. So under this kind of cellular technology, we have the uh, GERAN, so this is GSM, um, a GSM for RAN, no? so GSM Edge RAN. No? Okay, so under this GERAN, we have the base station controller and the base transceiver station. So these are the names of the different components under 2G RAN. For 3G RAN, we have the UMPS, uh, 3, uh, 3G is UMPS. Uh, universal mobile telecommunications uh, system. This is um, it has a UTRAN, uh, a UTRAN radio access network. Universal terrestrial RAN. We have here the radio network controller and the <coughs> node B. 
Okay, next is the 4G. 4G is long-term evolution, and this is called as evolved Utran. And the node of the 4G is called as E node B. So later in our discussion, you might see E node B in the RIC architectures. When you see it, that means it pertains to a node in 4G. That node is operating 4G technology. Then uh, currently, we have the 5G. This is new radio. And the radio access network is called as 5G, uh, 5G radio access network, or G node B. Okay, so the G node B is also the uh, node for the 5G. And then um, this is what you will see later in the RIC. So if it's E node B, it's 4G. If it's G node B, it's 5G. Uh -huh. Okay, so in the deep dive into ORAD architecture, we have shown that there are uh, different um, kinds of RAN in terms of how we implement the different components, whether it's distributed RAN or the traditional RAN, uh, cloud RAN and virtual RAN and ORAN. So uh, I'm not going to detail into all of this because um, this was um, this will take time, but the main idea is that for open RAN, this is a this is disaggregated RAN, we're in all the, the components, all the hardware, all the uh, interfaces, all of them are open. Open in the sense that the vendors can create each part and then the operators can interconnect all of them. You don't necessarily have to buy the whole setup from the same vendor. Okay, and then the, the functions will be running on top of a commercial off-the-shelf server. So the functions, the software may be um, uh, proprietary, but basically the interfaces, the hardware are, are not proprietary. Okay. So that's the main goal for open RAN. All the hardware components are um, open. Okay, so yeah, this is what I mentioned. Um, the remote radio unit, the BBU, the baseband unit, and all of them are COTS-based hardware. The BBU functions are virtualized and running on the COTS, uh, the COTS server. And then the front hall is an open interface. The previous interface in um, uh, two, was it two, 3G, I think, uh, is uh, closed, the CPRI interface. And then for run functions, we have the radio unit, the distributed unit, and the central unit. So whatever functions are assigned to each part of this, uh, each run uh, block depends on which split option is being used. So we will look into this one later. Right, so another way you know, to, in, to show the difference among the four uh, run uh, architecture evolutions or four RAN architectures. So yeah, the main idea is it's uh, open hardware, commercial off the shelf hardware, and open interface. Not only the front hall, but the other interfaces as well. Okay, so um, let's also look at the RAN and OSI model. model. We have here the uh, radio access network here towards the user equipment. This particular part of the RAN covers the first three layers of the OSI model. We have the layer one, two, and three. So a, a lot of us are already familiar with this because this is a typical model to um, explain the different protocols. So layer one is physical layer, layer two, data link layer, layer three is network layer. Okay, so let's, um, we will go, go over each part uh, in the next slide. Okay, and also uh, we have the main RAN components. We have the radio unit. Usually this is towards the um, RF side, towards the user equipment. Baseband unit usually handles all the other functions. Okay, so now let's uh, look at the RIC overview and the functional split. 
um, so that we can understand which parts or which functions will be assigned to a particular unit. Okay, so um, earlier I have mentioned that there are different generations and there are different names for them. And not only that, each of them um, have different controllers. For example, in 2G and 3G, there are a separate controller hardware in charge of the management and orchest orchestration of the radio access networks. So we have the BSC for 2G, which is the base station controller, and then the RNC or radio network controller for 3G. So in this um, architecture in 2G, um, all the building blocks are still um, in one uh, monolithic building block. Now you, you can't really um, split them into parts and then um, virtualize them yet. Okay, and then uh, in 2G and 3G, both of them have the controllers. And then when uh, 4G started, there is no separate controller element to simplify the architecture and allow faster responses. So um, in 4G, there was this interface called as X2 to allow exchange of information between different nodes. But the problem with that is X2 was um, had... Uh, X2 have different versions because the vendor had their own uh, flavor of X2. So that one um, is not basically open. So because it's not open, there, uh, that, that causes a vendor lock-in when the operators have to um, procure their 4G, 4G devices. Okay, so that, that's why we are trying to go far from that kind of um, technique we should have uh, open interfaces that means all all the interfaces have the same specifications they follow the standard so that uh, we can achieve interoperability by okay, next for um, 5g particularly the uh, 5g open ran there is a uh, ran intelligent controller or rick this enables the G node V functionalities for uh, network intelligence, resource assurance, and resource control. So in this uh, RIC node, there is no separate device, unlike the, the this 2G and 3G, but rather this is a software implementation. It's a block inside the COT server. Okay, so what is a RAN intelligent controller for? So um, the motivation behind this is the 5G applications often require low latency applications due to it being um, proposed as uh, ultra reliable low latency communications and uh, massive machine type communications. So for the 5G specifications requiring network functions, virtualization and software defined networking, um, uh, this uh, to enable configuration and optimization control of RAN infrastructure. Okay, so in part of this, um, part of this um, 5G uh, setup is the RIC or the RAN Intelligent Controller. So it's, it's actually not only for 5G, but it was also allowed to be deployed for 4G. So that's why we have E node B here. And the purpose of this is for uh, orchestration and management of the whole radio access network, particularly for uh, network intelligence, resource assurance, and resource control. So it is originally defined for 5G, but uh, later it was also uh, applied to earlier generations. Okay, so it is essential to support interoperability between different hardware so as long as the hardware are uh, commercial off the shelf, they are not proprietary and their software components may run on the COT server, then Rick uh, can manage them. Okay, so this one leverages data analytics and AI platform for better resource management. And for example, it can uh, have this kind of applications like quality of service, uh, slicing and 
um, mobility. So this RIC is uh, supporting self-optimization. So if the network, if the different components are, are able to self-optimize, then that means the use of the resources is efficient. So this is the motivation behind this. So be able to have interoperability, able to have a flexibility in the implementation. And of course, for operation, we have um, efficient operations. Okay, so um, what you can just um, take away from this slide is the RAN Intelligent Controller is um, talking to all the different RAN components, not only a single one, but the others as well, so that the whole radio access network would have a, an efficient, uh, efficient uh, resource management. Okay, so uh, let's look at the 4G and 5G core networks. In this kind of setup, we have the radio unit connected to the baseband unit using the front hole interface. So this, this is the full radio access network, this two. And then we have the back hole network towards the core network. So depending on the type of um, architecture, the baseband unit may be split further into two, the distributed unit and the um, central, central unit, centralized unit. Okay. So um, also, you can see here the typical assignment of protocols are as follows. In the radio unit, it is focused on radio frequency functions like um, analog to digital control, uh, analog to digital conversion, and uh, um, the digital to analog conversion. Then the upper parts, the uh, uh, phi or physical, the medium, uh, medium access control, radio link control, and so on. All of this are handled by the baseband unit. Okay, so um, this is the different RAN protocols, then the corresponding functions assigned. So, so we will not uh, cover each one in depth because we have limited time. But uh, just uh, keep in mind that this is how the mapping is. We have the physical data link and network layer. And then this different run protocols or run functions will be assigned to the components. Our, um, one, one option is that the radio frequency is only at the radio unit. All the others, um, baseband unit is assigned to handle all of those in all of those functions. Hey. So in uh, 3GPP guidelines, the baseband unit was um, basically split into two, the distributed unit and the centralized unit. Then since they are two different um, components, you can put them on different COT server, and then the, there should be an interface connecting the two. So the interface is the mid hall interface. This is also an open interface. So if it's not open interface, then of course there will be another vendor locked in. And then connecting this uh, CU, DU, and also towards the core network, we have the RAN intelligent controller. So this is a separate block that uh, orchestrates the communication among the different components. Okay, so whatever functions are assigned to this RU, DU, and CU, that would depend on the kind of functional split that is being implemented. Okay, so for functional split, there are different uh, protocol layers that will reside in different components. So uh, remember you, the different protocols are mentioned in the, in the other slide. We have the radio frequency, the MAC, the PHY, uh, RLC, and so on. Wherever, um, wherever the uh, wherever the function is residing, that would depend on the split option. So this provides a flexibility and easier deployment for the mobile network operators. They don't have to follow a single standard 
because everyone or every different um, radio access networks have different uh, implementation options, deployment scenarios. Maybe in some areas, they cannot put in all their equipment. So they can just pull all the resources and then manage several sites. Or maybe that site is um, has a lot of space. They can put in a lot of equipment. Maybe they can host all the the centralized unit functions. So depending really on the network operator, they can decide um, on what kind of split they can be they can use. Okay, so the three factors that influence the split choice would be the specific quality of service the user density and the transport networks uh, that are being used. So for, um, for QoS, whether the latency, the throughput, and uh, what kind of real-time or non-real-time applications that the network is supporting. Then for the uh, user density, basically it's the, the load demand, how much uh, demand is present in that particular area. And then, of course, the transport networks, depending on uh, the performance level, can the transport network handle all that traffic from the user density? Uh, so this is what I was mentioning earlier about functional split. So since um, in the monolithic RAN, we're in, we only have uh, all, everything in one block, the radio unit, the BBU. Uh, eventually, because of the evolution of the architecture, the radio unit is separated. It became a rad uh, remote radio unit. It is at the top of the antenna, then the baseband unit at the bottom. Then in the 3G PP guideline, the BBU, the baseband unit, was um, split into the centralized unit and the distributed unit. So the different RAN functions can now be assigned on each of the units here. Okay, so whether which part is assigned to which, that depends on the type of split. And in general, we have three different types. The low layer split. So in the low layer split, that is um, you are um, splitting only the radio unit from the other two. We'll have uh, another diagram later for us to understand this better. And then the high layer split is you only have CU and then the combination of DU and RU. So for low, you only separate RU. For high, you only separate CU. Then from dual, dual split, it's a combination of both. So you are using, uh, you are splitting RU and CU as well. Okay, so because of the mobile network operators can decide which one to use depending on their deployment scenario, this provides flexibility. And of course, they can virtualize the functions on top of the pod server. The particular function may be on one server and another function on another server. Okay, okay so this is the high-level split. So in the high-level split, um, we are only separating the centralized unit, as you can see on the figure. So there are two main blocks. We have the CU and the integrated DU and RU. So both the DU and RU are co-located in this case. Okay. So there is um, uh, F1 interface between DU and CU in this part. And then this one uh, can be, uh, the assignment of the RAN functions can be like this. In option one, only the RRC and SDAP are assigned for the CU. So this is the network uh, layer three protocol. Then for the option two, you also have the PDCP. So if you cut the the functions from PDCP and above, then that is high layer split. Okay, so this uh, kind of option is um, good for cases where you have a dense urban environment. So 
so that uh, all the DU functions, all the RRE functions are hosted on that uh, area because it handles a lot of um, a lot of load, a lot of demand. Okay, for the low layer split, you are um, as you only have two blocks. You have RU and the integration of CU and DU. Okay, so since it's low layer split, so you expect that it's at the lower bottom of our architecture of our OSI model. And depending on the option number, you'll have a different function assigned to the RU. For example, in option six, all the, all the layer one functions are at the bottom, are at the RU. Then R7, uh, sorry, option seven, the radio unit is only handling the RF and the low phi. So the, the low phi is more on the uh, uh, modulation and demodulation. And then for the option eight, which is the one of the um, legacy options, you only have the RF. So only the DAC and ADC, the digital to analog converter and analog to digital converter is on the radio unit. Okay, so you, looking at this one, you, you can uh, visualize that this is a low layer split and um, basically at the lower portion. And if you want a dual split, then you just have to combine any of the two. Okay, so, but uh, let's first look at uh, option six. For option six, there is a particular interface that is assigned between RU and uh, CU and DU. So in RU, uh, in CU and DU, um, this, is the, the, this is the front hall connection and nfap means the the fapi means functional application uh, functional application platform interface the n indicates that it is for 5g and this one is um, specified by the small cell forum this allows scu sdu to connect to any sru so th the s here just pertains to small cells so, but it is still CU, it is still DU and RU. Okay, so this NFAP is an application programming interface for hardware components, implementing the 3GPP physical layer functions and the software stacks implementing the higher functions. So when you say, say a small cell, this uh, pertains to uh, different uh, smaller cells uh, configuration like femto, pico, microcells, usually covering a smaller area like inside a building or maybe an outdoor wireless service for extension. Okay, so that so this is for option six. Okay, option seven is where we have this kind of setup. We're in the uh, low fi is at the RU. And uh, this one uses a different interface called as ECP. Okay, so ECP or uh, um, this one uh, is defined by ORAN. This is preferred for delay sensitive services and it allows sharing and pooling of the resources while maintaining low processing on the DU and RU since um, not all the information are found and uh, not all the functions are found in RU. Okay, so the CU functionality may be embedded on the same server or it can be pushed up the network as a virtualized aggregation entity. So if you have several sites, um, the CU functions of all those sites may be on co-located on the same um, data center, same switching office. Okay, so lastly, this is uh, one of the first few options. Option eight, this was highly effective in 2G and 3G when the traffic and processing rates are lower. This allows centralized traffic aggregation from our use because all the functions 
starting from the phi and above. So the modulation, the modulation until the upper layers, all of them are hosted at the CU and the DU. Okay, so in this case, we have the front hall interface called CPRI. Originally, this was a vendor specific. So when you need to change one device, like RU, you also have to change your um, DBU. So if you change vendors, um, you have to overhaul everything. But later they upgraded it or rather um, um, change it so that you can have an open interface like the, the ECP to allow interoperability of devices and technologies. Okay, so um, to summarize, these are the different split options. There are other split options as well, but um, we, we are not going to be able to cover them all in this particular webinar. But to give you an idea, we have the high layer split. We have options one and two. This is how we split the RAN functions. So only RRC and SDAT. Then the front hall interface is using F1. This is the interface between CU and DU. Then we have the low layer split at the bottom, whether it's option six, seven, and eight. So we have this, the following interfaces, the NFAPI, the ECPRI, ECPRI, defined by ORAN, or the, the legacy one, the CPRI. This one, however, is vendor specific. So the operators and the vendors can decide the split variant that they need. And of course, they can also combine to get the dual split. Depending on their design, on their operational needs, they can choose whichever uh, they want. If they want all the resources to be pulled at the uh, far end, then they can use the low layer splits. Okay, so these are uh, some sample deployment scenarios according to that uh, concept. So you can have um, each of the block independent from each other. We have uh, a CU, a DU, and an RU block. They have different uh, locations, different um, uh, placements. Or you can have a co-located CU and DU. So they're on the same location. So maybe same server as well. But the radio unit is separate. Or you can have a co-located DU and RU. Or in the, um, there is a, an interface here, the mid hole interface F1. So uh, this kind of setup can be used to pull the different scenarios. In this case, um, there is no, uh, there is still a front hole interface, but just a very short front hall interface. And usually um, the um, this one would require a fiber connection from CU to D. And then uh, lastly, all the, all the three components are integrated in uh, one site. They're all found on the same uh, place. This is best used for uh, small cell scenarios or the hot spot scenarios wherein you have to perform everything in one um, one side. Okay. So actually this one is um, specified in the ITUT technical report. So if, if you search for this, um, that document contains the this deployment scenarios. Okay, so the run functions assigned on each of this each of this block depends on the split options that uh, the operator has uh, selected. Um, also, these are some of the uh, solutions that Small Cell Forum has uh, proposed. So whether the solution is an integrated solution, um, it's a monolithic block, or uh, separate solutions or disaggregated solutions, it may be a two product solution. So maybe one product is the RU, another product is the DU, uh, CU, 
or maybe you have uh, CU and the RUDU together, depending on the option. Um, they call the, the lower layer and upper layer splits. Each of them have two blocks if you're not, uh, if you're not operating dual split options. But if you really want to have dual split, then that would entail that you have um, three blocks. So you have the RU, DU, and the CU. And you can uh, use this kind of um, combinations like options two and six, uh, options two and seven, options two and eight. So the, the, the information below just describes which uh, organization describe or define the option number. Okay. So this is um, um, as, as suggested by the small cell forum. Okay. So the functional splits provide flexibility and uh, the vendors can decide whether they want uh, integrated solution or, of, or whether they can design and uh, sell integrated solutions or disaggregate aggregated solutions. Okay, so hopefully you got an idea on the RAN Intelligent Controller and also the functional splits. Now let's uh, go deeper into the RIC interface or the RIC um, the RAN Intelligent Controller. And uh, we'll be dealing with the uh, overall RIC architecture first. Okay, so we know that we have the three blocks here, the CU, DU, RU. And actually, each part has a lot more functions, a lot more components inside. Like, for example, in the uh, CU, it has a CU CP control plane and CU user plane. And then on, on top, we have the uh, RAN Intelligent Controller, SMO. This uh, two are helping manage, manage the whole RAN, this uh, CU, DU, and RU. So this still is part of the radio access network. It's not yet um, the core network. So the SMO and the near real time uh, RIC manages all of this uh, components, even those at the other nodes. Okay, so um, in this case, there are different interfaces. Um, yeah, I, I, we summarize it here. But for this one, this is front hall. Then this one, again, this is the um, mid hall. And then we have E1 to connect the two planes. E2 to connect the rig, the near real time rig to the CU and the DU. Then we have A1 interface to connect the near real time intelligent controller, a near real time rig to the um, management orchestration block. So there are, yes, there are several interfaces here. So it's okay if you are not able to memorize all the interfaces. Again, it really takes um, time and familiarity before you remember which interface is assigned to connect which ones. Okay, so for um, the ORAN, Rick, these two are for optimization using AI and machine learning. The non-real-time RIC is at the SMO, while the, well, the near real-time RIC is uh, outside and is connecting the CU and the D. So depending on the split options, each part will have different um, functionalities. Like this is just an example. Um, this is like option seven. Okay, so um, notice also in this case, you have uh, an O at front. It just means it's, the prefix just means that you're pertaining to ORAN, ORAN specific PU, ORAN specific RU. So that means that that particular unit is able to handle, um, is, is able to allow interoperability. So it's, it's open. Okay, so um, these two RIC architectures or two RIC frameworks are what we uh, are going to discuss in the next slides.
Okay, so we also have other software components. So we have the DU, the Multi Radio Access Technology CU. So it may allow different uh, generations. Then the RIC, the two RICs here. Each of the functional software elements is deployed as virtualized uh, network functions. So they are uh, on containers to distribute the capacity across multiple network components. So they are virtualized and are running on top of the COD server. The RAN control loops are as follows. Um, the control loop for non-real-time RIC, which you will see later. The near real-time RIC control loop also later. And then the ODU, ODU scheduler loop, this one, the, the one connecting DU to the, uh, the, the others. Okay, so um, I have been mentioning the near real-time and non-real-time RIC for a quite a while now, but uh, the main difference between the two is from the name itself, non-real-time. So it's something that does not require immediate um, communications. So it supports tasks that require greater than one second of latency, whether it's uh, one minute, one hour, or so on. Near real time, it supports tasks that are that must be accomplished as soon as possible. So in this case, it supports tasks that require one second or less than one second of latency. So that um, particular those particular tasks that the RAN must be able to accomplish as soon as possible. Okay, so for the uh, non-real-time RIP, it usually hosts the R apps. The R apps are those uh, applications that uh, perform the greater than one second uh, latency task, like um, optimization, configuration management, data analytics. If the, the RAN wants to self-organize, have some machine learning models, um, it may be done on the, the non-real-time component. But of course, since um, those kind of um, functions, procedures would take time, machine learning takes time to model, train the model, then you cannot uh, put that in the near real-time RIC. So the near real-time RIC is focused on uh, radio resource management, particularly for 4G and 5G. And this one is um, for um, uh, something that really requires near real-time applications. And then there was this ODU scheduler control loop. This is responsible for scheduling hybrid automatic repeat requests and deforming for the uh, radio unit. Okay, so now um, let's look at the overall ORAN Alliance reference architecture. It looks like we have a lot of components, but this is similar to the other diagram. We just have the ODU, the ORU. Remember, DU and RU are always connected by front hall interface. Then we have the CU. CU is connected to the DU by F1. It is just called multi-RAT or multi-radio access um, technology CU. And then to manage the three, we also have the near real-time RIC. You can see it is connected to the CU and the DU using the E2 interface. Then the non-real-time RIC at the SMO is connected to near real-time RIC A1 using A1. So the near real-time is also near, <laughs> near the CU, DU, RU, because it should support uh, tasks that are less than one second latency. So the closer it is the, to the CU, then of course the faster the, the the uh, transmission delay will be. Okay, so this is the overall diagram, but um, there is actually this kind of diagram here. It is similar to the previous diagram, but just more information. So of course we will not be able to cover all of this, but what you need to take away from this one 
is each of the block that I have mentioned have uh, has a particular application, has a particular function, and they allow all the radio access networks to be able to communicate because uh, of all of this. And usually all this um, information are virtualized because they are running on uh, COTS uh, server or the commercial of the shelf server. Okay, so now let's uh, look at uh, also another way to view the, the radio access network. Uh, there are different interfaces, which, which um, there are a lot of them, but they have different purposes. They are connecting different parts, um, like for example, the, the F1, open front hall, connecting the CUS and the M plane and so on. Notice there is also this E node B here which shows that the near real-time RIC can connect uh, several different uh, node Bs. So this, this one may be uh, for 5G, and then this one may be for 4G. Okay, so this is just to summarize the different interfaces available. Um, and each of them are def is defined by different organizations, whether, whether defined by ORAN, 3GPP, and so on. So of course we have limited time, so I just have to go through the other slides. So we have R apps and X apps. R apps would be uh, those applications that are hosted at the non-real time RIC. This kind of um, um, applications usually just are used to facilitate optimization and operations of the radio access network or perhaps data analytics. Some examples are um, AI ML models for optimization or uh, traffic forecasting. So both of these cases require uh, processing of more than one second because you cannot simply forecast traffic um, instantaneously without any, for any kind of modeling first. And then X apps will be near real time. So the X here pertains to any, basically any applications that require less than one second latency. These are uh, microservices that allow radio resource management, like uh, slicing the network, scheduling functionalities and so on. So the third party companies may um, develop this because they are, these are software functions. They can develop their own so that they can, um, they can be run on different hot server. So different companies have different implementation of this. Like for example, in Ericsson, they have R app categories for different functions. AT&T, Nokia also have their own um, X app, app uh, examples. Uh, Parallel Wireless also have X apps for virtualized um, 2G and 3G and 4G. So really because we um, virtualize a lot of the functions, we can uh, basically reconfigure them, redesign them, uh, depending on how, how we need them. So that's uh, the, the advantage of the open, open RAN. Right, so let's just go over briefly the, the non-real-time RIC. So again, the non-real-time RIC is hosted at the uh, SMO, the upper part. If you hear non-real-time, this is the, those tasks that are greater than one second. So they can be far, far away from the, from the RU. Okay, so um, there is actually a, in, a, an architecture for SMO, like a different interface and inside this, particular SMO, there is a lot more information that, of course, we will not be able to cover. But if you uh, eventually are able to take up our course in Asia Open Run Academy, then uh, we will go over all of this uh, individually. But um, this is still the SMO, the, this big block here. 
And then this is still connected to the cloud, the near real time rig, the, uh, the nodes. Okay, so also for near real time um, rig architecture, this is, since it's near real time, usually this allows the less than one second task. So it should be nearer, near as well, nearer as well to the CU, DU, RE. Okay, so uh, this is the near real time RIC internal architecture. And particularly this, this one in pink, this big block here, this is the near real time RIC. But we just um, uh, zoomed in and look at the inside. So the this RIC contains different APIs, different X apps, different functions to be able to allow the, the management of the radio resources. Okay, so because um, uh, we, we can design or we can have the RIC to be either centralized or um, distributed. So when we say centralized, um, we have the uh, we have all the functionality for one part only like this. It can serve the five G only. It can serve both four G and five G, or it can only serve four um, G. Okay, so um, if you see E node B, that is uh, for four G. Or it, you may have a distributed near real time RIC wherein one big block, one big block of the RIC would be uh, connecting the different nodes. Okay, so one physical near real time RIC that consists of one or more logical near real time RICs. Okay, so just to so, uh, just to summarize, sorry, I had to go through a lot of the slides quickly, but um, just to summarize, we have the RAN intelligent controller that is used to manage the radio resources, um, radio networks, and this trick enables the four G and five G nodes to be um, to be used for functions like network intelligence. Um, resource assurance, resource control. This functional split defines how the run functions assigned to the components are, are like uh, CU, DU, RU, and among the eight split options, the operators, vendors can select which variant they plan to use. We also have the three run control groups, like the non-real-time rig, near real-time rig, and the ODU scheduler control loops. We learned earlier that non real time RIC supports tasks that are more than one second. So, from the name itself, non real time, so it's something that doesn't necessarily need to be deployed uh, immediately. While the near real time RIC supports tasks that are less than one second uh, delay, require less than one second delay. So, it's almost real time it's near real time and it is located nearer the c d and r our apps our services on the uh hosted on the non real time rig to facilitate optimization and data analytics x apps are on the near real time rig and they are used for radio research ma management something that requires immediate um, um, connection or immediate um, deployment. Okay, so um, uh, here are some uh, further readings and resources, and hopefully uh, everyone has uh, learned something new about the RAN Intelligent Controller.